We got a drive failure, folks. You think I would have fixed this while I built the server. But no, it was another video opportunity. Get your next gaming PC from Build Redux. Compare pricing to buying the parts yourself and stop overpaying. Pick your starting budget, see your estimated gaming performance, and then see your PC based on your choices. Plus, Redux offers a growing support hub to answer all your questions. And it's backed by a two-year parts and labor warranty, so you're covered. Pick your budget, pick your games, and get Build Redux. You're gonna hear a lot of positive things about Unraid in this video, and I'm here to tell you right now this is not sponsored in any way whatsoever. Um, Unraid has never paid us anything. They did give us this key about three years ago to use. And besides that, everything we're about to say regarding Unraid and its use and stuff that we're gonna show right now is 100% independent from the brand. So I just wanna make that clear before people are like, this is just a 10 minute ad. It's not. Because what we're gonna show you is the, one of the reasons why we chose Unraid. Now I went with Unraid when I was talking about server solutions back in 2019 with Linus. Remember when Linus was kind of going on tour giving everyone servers? Linus basically was like, you're smart enough to build your own shit. Here's an Unraid key. I swear to God, that's how it went. So anyway, uh, yeah. One of the things that we loved about the idea of Unraid is the fact that it can seamlessly build, uh, Unraid or unconnect a drive from the array, and you'll never know there's a problem unless you load up the GUI and then see that there's a problem with the drives. So if a drive fails, the way we're set up here is we have, eight dri we have eight drives total. Two drives are for redundancy, six drives are actual storage capacity that we're using. And those six drives are, are in an Unraid array. So if a drive fails, it will just take that drive offline, rebuild the array, redistribute the, the data from the redundancy drives, and then you're, you're running without ever noticing anything ever happened. Which is the only reason we even know this happened, this bad drive right here, disk four, with the serial number showing, is the fact that Phil loaded up the GUI to just, I can't remember why, why did you load up the GUI? When we were shutting it down to get ready to build it? Yeah, because yeah, he, he logged in remote to shut it down. He's like, oh, we got a red X on a drive. So it has completely taken that drive uh, offline. Now the only reason we didn't know is because we don't have notifications of the drive health or, or the Unraid health set up. Otherwise it would have started pinging you like, hey, drive four has a problem, drive four has a problem, hey. And if you're not taking care of it, it'll just continue to annoy you. We have 10 terabyte Ironwolf Pro drives in here. We have two left that we were sent, because we have eight in here, two, 10 total. We have, I think, a couple that have already come out of Phil's rig, because he has somebody sitting in his actual edit rig as well. So he'll edit local, and then when he's done, he'll, uh, he'll ingest everything into his system. Then when he's done, he'll move everything over to the, to the server and keep it off his drive. Um, so some of these are sitting inside of his, his system. Now we've got something like what, 52 terabytes or? Yeah, so we've used 22 point, or 27.8 terabytes with 32.2 free, and this is still, we've held on to so much garbage. Like really old project files, we don't really need to keep the raw footage, just the final exports is fine. Um, so we can actually clear a lot of space off of here. What we're doing today is we're showing you now how we're gonna fix this which is kind of ni nice, or nice, nice? I was gonna say neat and nice at the same time, so it's very nice. Disk four, it's also showing us the serial number, as you can see right here, because each drive, especially when it comes to smart, reports things. Temperature, as you can see the temps, our drives are staying very cool. I don't know why this one's one C hotter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the little down arrow, and I'm gonna turn off each one of these drives, and you can hear them clicking away and turning off. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna spin that drive up. There we go. Now, I'm gonna see which drive turns on. Oh, it's not the bottom one. I can feel it. It's this drive right here. It's P3 in stack two. So it's, it's P3-2. It's this drive right here. And when I'm touching it, I'm feeling Oh, like it's trying to spin up and then- It like spun up, but when it first turned, spun up, it was going very slow. All right, so I'm gonna spin this down again. Oh yeah, as soon as I clicked down, I felt it like on the drive. Parking the heads. Yep, and it is now off. We'll shut down the array, and with Unraid being the awesome utility that it is, I should be able to just put this drive in its place, and it will automatically rebuild the RAID and add this back to the stack. So let's do that. Echo. I bet you I bet I bet you thought I was gonna forgot to forgot today's code, but you're right, I did. That's why it looks so different suddenly. Today's code is is this worldwide? Yes, it is. So we stopped the array now, uh, and now we go to disk four here. She would come down and what? Say no device. So we're removing that drive from the array essentially. So it's not gonna like now if I take it off, 
and rebuild it, what we should end up seeing is a, a new device type of deal that we can then bring online and add to our array. So we can't just shut it down, take the drive out, put a new one in. It's, it, I mean, theoretically we could, but we're still gonna do this the proper way of actually removing it from the array. So now that it says no device, now we can come over here and shut down the server. Power down. Okay, now we can remove that drive. So it was P3 is what I said, right? Yeah, it was P3 on stack two. Now, because I, in my infinite wisdom, went through and like fully cable managed all the wires attached to the front of the cage, because I could take the cage screws out, push down the tabs and push the cages out the front, but I would have to unplug and remove all the drives. So I find it actually easier in this particular system for me to just remo remove the four screws on the side, holding in the AIO. And I, do you guys wanna know why I went with AIO? It's not because I'm just some water cooling snob. I legitimately do not have an air cooler that will clear the lid. I tried, two different coolers. Um, a Vitru cooler and one of my smaller Be Quiet coolers and they will not clear the lid. So I just stuck with the AIO because it fits here. Um, it really is nothing any more complicated than that. I've thought about ordering one of the low profile coolers because in terms of ultimate reliability, I really want as many or as few moving parts as possible. So I'll probably ch revisit that in the future. The only problem is to do that, I'll have to take the motherboard back out because to reach the rear bracket under the motherboard, there's no hole there. And the bottom side of this chassis doesn't come off to allow access to both sides of it. So I'll have to take it all out to do that. And I don't really wanna do that. So anyway, so now I can do this. And where I taped my SSD was not doing me any favors. I just wanna point that out, that I, that was stupid of me to do that. It's right here taped to the wall and I can't slide the cooler where I need to to clear it. But I can bend it, because it's steel. Not the drive, but the. <laughs> All right, so here's our bad drive. We'll set this apart or aside. In fact, I'm gonna label it now with blue tape, just to remind me. This guy is bad. So the serial number on here is uh, Zulu Alpha 2, 1, David, uh, David, no, Delta. Because I'm going back and forth between like the police and the, the military. The police one and the military. <laughs> Delta November Sierra, what's G? Golf. Golf, that's right. And that's what we have here. ZA21DNSG. So this is the drive right here. We shall mark this as lived its best life, but also it's the lazy drive because it checked out first. Okay, so P3. Start up! Yay! Okay, because I couldn't reach where it fell. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're just putting it back together now, and we'll take you through the reverse. Now, when we, when we rebuild the array, it's gonna have to copy a lot of data. So it's important to note that while it's doing that, um, it's gonna need to be uninterrupted, like uninterrupted power during all of that. In fact, it, I have a UPS on my rack, and it'd be even best to have that UPS plugged into it, because it can take hours for it to be complete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to the point where we show you how to get it rebuilding, but we're not gonna actually start the rebuild process because right now the, nothing's changed. It still has a drive that, was re that removed itself. So we put a new drive in, it, it will see it, but it's still not using it until we rebuild the array so it actually copies data to it. The nice thing about this too is if we wanted to have a, a, a monitor always connected to this on the server, we could, on the rack we could, but I'm not gonna do that because Phil just remotes into it. But we can load a GUI mode on here though. Why is it such a different resolution suddenly? You notice that? Mm -hmm. It filled the screen on the last boot and this time it's just, okay, whatever. We also think it's funny that it basically loads what looks like a Windows 98, like GUI, and it has Firefox as the, the, the browser for it. Yeah, it's weird. The yeah, it's a totally are... different resolution. It's like actually native res, or actually no, it looks like 720 or something. Weird. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe we just upgraded our resolution with that drive. <laughs> that drive was holding back the res. I don't know. Here we go, look at that. See how it says disk four not installed? So we could come over here. We have to stop the, uh, yes. So we need to stop the array first. Cause you can't make any changes to it while it's active and being used. So once it spins down all the drives, there we go. We can now click down here and say, 
there. It's now assigned. And you see it's blue, that means it's assigned, but it's not a part of the array. So we would have to rebuild the array, but we are not gonna do that, and this is it right here. See, stop replacement disk installed. That would say start, and that's what would start it. But we're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna actually have to say power down because we don't want to have this sitting here now on this for five hours or however long it's gonna take. So anyway, as you can see, this is why we use Unraid because it's extremely simple. Um, regular RAID setups, I mean, they not to say there's anything wrong with them, there's, they're not. It's just when it comes to ease of use, maintenance and redeploy, for the size that we are in a small team, this is what made the most sense for us. Like I said, once again, not a sponsor. They did not sponsor this video in any way. Um, this is just what we've been using and it works. And the nice thing is when we're ready and we wanna add four more drives to this and expand it, it'll be just as easy as you saw with adding potentially another controller card, having it controlling those four drives, having it be recognized in Unraid, assigning them and redeploying and, and, and rebuilding the array. Uh, so there you go guys. Short, easy video of how easily we were able to identify, replace, and reinstall a new drive with Unraid. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Is it lunchtime yet? No, it's not. It is somewhere. We have cookies in the fridge. <laughs>